This is episode 50 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Hello, and welcome to Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over idiocy. Today, for episode 50, I want to do something really big, something that affects a lot of people, either directly or indirectly, or like directly, indirectly, I don't know. Pamela Anderson put out a statement last week or the week before talking about porn and how porn can affect people. Now, this is not like a new subject. I mean, I can think back in like the early 90s. Do you remember that episode of Seinfeld where they all made the bet to see who could last the longest without jacking off? <laughs> Do you remember the Friends episode where they got free porn by accident and then how that totally like shifted their behavior and the way they like viewed reality and stuff? Hey. I was just at the bank. And there was this really hot teller, and she didn't ask me to go do it with her in the vault. <laughs> Same kind of thing happened to me. Woman pizza delivery guy comes over, gives me the pizza, takes the money, and leaves. What, no, like, nice apartment, bet the bedrooms are huge? <laughs> no, nothing! You know what? We have to turn off the porn. And this is something that was actually pretty big. Um, a few years ago, there's a lot of scientific research on it, and and I'm doing this just in case you 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 guys missed it a couple years ago. Pamela Anderson bringing it up, you know, changes that a little bit, you know, because it's it keeps it fresh and new, and it's actually kind of funny that Pamela Anderson is the one bringing up the whole "hey, porn's bad" thing because Pamela Anderson, for a lot of us, maybe me also, was kind of like our like gateway drug into the whole porn thing. I mean, she's like the pot of porn, I guess. Does that make sense? So, you know, she, man, the whole sex tape thing, she like revolutionized fame. Nobody would have given a crap about Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian would still would just be some chick in LA if there wasn't for like sex tapes. Pamela Anderson started that. So way to go. Way to go, Pam. But there really is a serious side to porn and watching porn. And it is not even eerily similar to drugs. It is just like drugs. People get addicted just like drugs, but they get addicted just like drugs because you're changing the chemistry in your brain. You're, tra- you're changing like neural pathways in your brain. So like for an example, when you look at porn, your body releases endorphins your body releases well depending on what you're doing while you're looking at porn your body releases uh serotonin your body releases um oxycontin we're talking like some serious chemicals here and what that does is that connects in your brain hey if i look at porn i'm gonna release endorphins and serotonin and oxycontin all these like really like feel good chemicals so you created a pathway in your brain that says porn equals feeling good relaxed happy now that's there so what happens is the next time you get into a point where next time you have a have a rough day or you're bored or you're whatever you're like your brain's going hey i want to be happy i want to be relaxed i want to feel better what can i do what can i do what can i do and what does it do goes hey man the last time i looked at porn i felt pretty good let's try that again it's kind of the same way. Think about it the same way um, when you have those like sugar cravings. So usually people have sugar cravings because they're tired. They want more energy. They're not focused. Usually generally towards the end of the day. And your body goes, hey, I want energy. What can I do? Oh, I know. If I eat sugar, I get energy really, really quick. Your brain's not telling you hey, I get energy really quick, but I'm going to feel like crap later and I'm going to be a fat ass and I'm going to do all these other negative things that happen when I eat sugar. It's just going, I want energy, I want energy, I want energy, sugar. 
and then you crave, oh, that's like those Snickers, those Snickers commercials. That's basically a Snickers commercial right there. Your brain's telling you you're hungry, you're, you're, you're grumpy. What's the new one? With William Defoe being Marilyn Monroe or whatever? Eats a Snickers, everything's better. Yay. Why? Because your brain just wanted quick sugar. Not good for you. Just like drugs aren't good for you, just like porn's not good for you. So your brain's telling you, you already created a pathway. Like do it one time. You, you created a pathway that says happiness and relaxation and everything. Mm, porn, I can do that. So now that this link is there, you put, the, you put that in your brain now. It's like you paved the street, you cleaned it off. It's a straight pathway now. What happens is you start doing that over and over and over again because your brain keeps telling you, hey, remember how good we felt last time we looked at some boobies online or whatever, whatever crazy stuff you're into? And it starts doing that. And then as you're doing that, you're you're releasing dopamine. You have Your dopamine receptors are, are firing over time. And depending on how much you look at it, some people look at it too much. And it's not just with like the crazy stuff. Like you're going through and you, you guys know, you look through like Pinterest and Instagram and stuff like that. It's it's pretty it's like softcore porn you know i've i've seen it but you start doing that and you you start releasing dopamine over and over and over and over and over again and what happens just like the person who does cocaine just like the person that does heroin you start losing your sensitivity to it your brain starts reducing the number of receptors because it's just on overload all the time you know seven days a week five days a week four days a week whatever over and over and over again so you start losing sensations or whatever what happens when you start losing it you start looking up maybe more stuff more often maybe you start looking up different stuff than you were looking before and it's like it's it's quicksand you guys seen uh princess bride when they're walking through the fire swamp wesley and princess buttercup through the fire swamp and she goes right into the quicksand That's what we're dealing with here. The internet is endless. So you could just be setting you could just be setting dopamine off, new dopamine, new chicks, new whatever, new styles of porn, different types of porn, everything. Whatever it is, it set those dopamine off because your brain, you're just running on dopamine right now. And it's like you're an addict because you keep looking. I mean, be honest. How many times have you looked on the internet at porn and you probably ended up spending more time than you really should have or wanted to or even intended to? That's what I'm talking about. It just gets carried away because it's just like a it's just like a suction. Like once you're in, it feels good to release dopamine into your system. And it feels good to release oxycodone into your system. And it feels good to release endorphins into your system. And porn does that easily, too easily. I mean, your phone, your computer, every everything, everything is accessible to porn in like two clicks, three clicks. You just type in XXX and you're gonna get some crazy crap. I think it's really important. You need to like think of 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 porn almost like heroin because you're changing what arouses you. You're changing who arouses you. You're going to start losing interest. Like your relationships are not going to be great because you're not finding your sexual partner as sexual because your partner doesn't have 700,000 different files of all kinds of different crazy stuff and you're seeing all these variations and extremes and this and that and all sorts of crazy stuff and people start losing interest and not only that if you're doing what i think most people are doing when they're looking at porn which is you know check check um you're losing sensitivity in in your gear so it's not even going to feel as good physically mentally you're basically ruining your sex life and you ruin your sex life you're going to ruin your relationship one thing that's really also really important about the dopamine is is, is people associate the porn with the, just the relationships and, and that kind of stuff. But what happens is if your dopamine receptors are shutting down and you need more dopamine and more stimulation to feel good and happy and all that stuff that dopamine did for you before, it's not like there's just a porn part of your brain. It's your whole brain. So the things that used to make you as happy maybe won't make you as happy anymore. You know, your brain doesn't, your brain's just working on dopamine. When do I need dopamine? You know, when does it feel, when do I need to feel good? That kind of stuff. So whether you're, you're watching baseball or looking at boobies, you're going to need either more baseball or different baseball or, or more boobies and, and different boobies. It doesn't distinguish. So you could be affecting 
just your overall happiness in life. That's like ecstasy. So we have addictions like heroin. You have to step it up and do more of it like cocaine. And you're burning out parts of your brain like ecstasy. Like really think about that. We're talking about three like serious drugs here. But you got to think about you're basically programming your brain and frying your brain at the same time by looking at porn. And I know it sounds like a stretch. You want to say, oh, what's the big deal? Oh, I always come home. Oh, it's not cheating. Da, 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 da. But if you're sitting around looking at your wife, and I'm, I'm saying wife because uh, I'm assuming this is more of a dude issue than a chick issue. So I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not wrong. But I know there's chicks out there that probably have this issue too. But this is predominantly a dude issue. So I'm just going to stick with that. So you're looking at your wife, but going through your head, I mean, we're very visual beings. So whatever crazy stuff you were looking up before, that's flashing through your head. So you may be at home, but your mind's over here. When you end up having sex, however infrequently it is now, even if it's frequently, you have all these images in your head that are linking arousal and this and that to all these other women and all these other things online so your stimulation you're thinking about these things these things are running through your mind when you're with your wife in like the most intimate situation or your girlfriend or your partner whatever that's not good for relationships that ruins relationships like this is this is a this is a pretty serious topic so one thing i don't understand about porn is I don't even, honestly, I don't even understand how porn exists. I don't know how in the hell you can talk a woman into doing the stuff that they do in porn on camera. I mean, like most of the stuff they do in porn, it'd be hard to talk a woman into that doing that just in private, but to talk them into doing that with maybe multiple people on camera forever, because Google is forever, like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I'm assuming the money's good. But how you make your money is is more important than how much money you make. Because whatever those chicks have done, and I've seen some pretty crazy stuff, like that's forever. You can't undo that. It's online, like forever. And it's as raunchy as it gets. And why a woman would put themselves into that position, I have no idea. Like, at all. I don't get it. So, first off, I don't know how porn exists, period. But, second off, let's let's do a challenge. Let's see if you guys can actually not look at porn. And this is where you see where you really have an issue. I'm sure all of you guys are sitting there going, oh, man, pff, whatever. Look at porn, big deal. I look at it you know, once a week, you know, jack off a couple times a week, whatever. I mean, whatever it is, whatever your number is, I'm sure you think it's not a big deal. But can you not look at it? Because that's addiction. When you can shut that down, then you know you're okay. If you can't shut it down, you know you probably have an issue. Try 30 days. See how it works. There was a, uh, Tim Ferriss ran like a 30 day no porn, no jacking off thing a year ago, a couple years ago. And people felt better. They slept better. They had uh, more sex with their with the partners they were having better sex with their partners they were having you know better vivid dreams they were they just felt better because there's a lot of stuff that gets associated with releasing all these chemicals and everything on top of the fact that you're doing something that you really don't want people like you don't want to you're not going to go into work and be like oh man you guys i looked at the best porn yesterday and totally jacked off nobody's doing that so there's like a you get you're ashamed you're you know it's not good. It doesn't feel right. You know you're hiding it. You do. There's all these negative things on top of the fact that you're just jacking up your brain. You are just tweaking your brain all the time. Every time you flip on the, your computer or you're on your smartphone or whatever, and you're looking up some like dirty stuff or not even that dirty stuff. You're just you're constantly your brain is going crazy with the dopamine and the firing and all that stuff. So see if you can give it up. See if you can. I mean, I suggest just thinking about it as a day at a time as opposed to 30 days. See if you can really do it. And I would love to hear from people that completed it and the people that didn't complete it. Because I think we, you could, you're going to learn a lot about yourself over these next 30 days if you can actually do it. So if you do do it, I would love to hear 
your success story. And if you didn't do it, I would love to hear how you failed. And I think being able to share this with other people and stuff would be would be a great thing for um, for people to hear because I, this really is an issue. Like it really will affect relationships. And porn now is like, how accessible is it? You remember? Maybe this is just me. So I'm late thirties, right? So remember when you were younger, you had to like steal a Playboy or sneak a penthouse or something. You had like that one magazine under your bed or in your drawer for like years. It was like one magazine. And now every time you go, I mean, it's just everything could be different every single time you go on. And if you really think about that, like that, like rabbit hole, you jump down. When you think about how like your brain really is being affected, your dopamine receptors are really being affected. And the only way to release, to get the dopamine feeling the way you did whenever you started, just like with drugs, just like with all kinds of stuff that's not good for you, you have to do more and more and different types and more of it. There's a reason they call it a gateway drug. Because once you get tired of the gateway drug, you step it up. So that's why pot leads to pills, leads to heroin, leads to whatever. It's the same way that uh, Pamela Anderson went from, you know, went from Baywatch to Playboy to this is this is me and Pamela Anderson as my gateway. This is like Baywatch, you know, or, or uh, Home Improvement to Baywatch to Playboy to sex tape to whatever. Like that's there's like a, there's like a progression, and if you're not aware of it and you allow yourself to rewire your brain, and there's good rewiring and there's bad rewiring. This is definitely bad rewiring shut it down you're gonna feel better and it's gonna take like you like you really you might have a hard time with this but that's how you know that you need help and do it before it progresses because it's going to progress to something something's gonna happen where you look up something weird or your wife walks it up and walks in on you looking at something you're like where it's, it's gonna be an issue in your relationship and if you're not having sex regularly and you're not as attracted to your wife, it's, it's, it's an issue. So you really have to set some boundaries if you're having trouble with this where you need to treat it kind of like an addiction because it's an addiction. Why is it an addiction? Because it's affecting your brain. And once it gets into your head and stuff, you, 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 can, you, can, you can undo it, but it's difficult. The brain is a very special place but you can totally hijack it by doing crap like this by doing drugs by looking at porn too much so you can you're hijacking like your whole life because if your brain's not healthy if you're setting up bad pathways and stuff for your brain that's not good so if you guys have any other questions about this there's tons of articles on this online i really suggest you look into it because it's there's scientific research that's showing that porn and the brain are a horrible combination. Physically, emotionally, mentally, everything. So please take it seriously. I don't know how you're going to have this conversation if you're a woman or you're a girl or whatever. If your partner is, is you think there's a porn issue, I don't know how you're going to have this conversation with them, but bring it up. Chances are if they get angry about it, it's an issue. Just kind of a FYI, if they get really defensive, it's probably an issue. And that can be like your your um, your red flag. So good luck with that. 30 days. What's today? Today is, today is September 12th. 30 days from now is October 12th. Is it really that easy? Anyways, so here's the deal. Don't look at porn till October 12th. And honestly, if you can get through October 12th, I would stop looking at it altogether. But like, look at it realistically. And I know if you find yourself having an issue with it, you got to figure out how to, how to break it. Don't just, it's going to be embarrassing. Like I promise you, it's going to be, if you go, oh shit, I really have a problem with porn. It's going to be, it's going to be embarrassing, but you got to do something about it. So go online and research porn addiction and how to get over porn addiction and all that. There's like, there's some booklets and stuff you can, I don't know. There's, there's groups and stuff that can, that, that can help you can go to porn anonymous i don't know something like that but figure out whatever it's going to do to get you to break this habit it's going to be better for just you as a person it's going to be much better for your relationships 
It's going to make the people around you happier because you're going to be better and you can start building up those dopamine receptors again and like normal day-to-day things will make you happy and, and, and make you content and all those things that you have hijacked your brain with with porn. You can fix all those things now. So please take it seriously. Seriously try to do a 30-day challenge. If you cannot go without porn for 30 days, you have a problem. You need to fix it because it's bad and it can't get bad. Look at Anthony Weiner. One, he's got a, what a perfect name to have for a person that's going through, <laughs> that's going through like high profile sex allegations and stuff. Anthony Weiner, Mr. Weiner. It sounds like a porn name. Um, I promise you that he started out just looking at porn. It was just him jacking off in his office or in his room, whatever he was doing, you know, the normal thing. And then it got less stimulating and it got less exciting and he started needing more and different in this. And it turned into sending pictures of his ding dong on the phone. Even after getting caught, you know, you're like got a major problem when you get caught and you still can't do it. You still can't stop it. That's a big problem. So, Anthony Weiner is like an extreme case of that because high profile over and over and over. He's now he's losing his marriage. I mean, just it's a mess and it sucks, but he's addicted. And if you don't treat it like an addiction, it's going to progressively get worse and worse and worse. And you're going to be fighting yourself and fighting yourself and fighting yourself. Why not just cut it off? Our whole lives are made up of habits, good habits and bad habits. Stop doing bad habits, start doing good habits, and eventually, like 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days, it goes away, and it becomes easier to not do it. You have to give yourself that chance to do that. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Fuck it, let's go.